All right, so Brian Kelly yesterday, uh, speaking with the press, uh, we will start with his opening comments with Coach Kelly came to the podium and, and opened it up six minutes. I mean, it was a, it was a hell of a difference between Pittman and – and Kelly Pittman just sits down at a table. <laughs> he's got a, like an Arkansas football T-shirt on. And he just like kind of sits there, and he's like he's like just kind of like Wait, looking at the lunch? room. Yeah. Questions? Everybody <laughs> just kind of like somebody just like shoots a question. Like you know, like you can't even hear the question. Like the guy's not mic'd up. I mean, whoever's asking the question, the press member's not even mic'd like up. Like the substitute teacher. <laughs> it's like a 1980s press conference. We don't know why he's here. <laughs> and then you get to BK, and I mean, it's like. It's like a presidential press conference. Yeah. I mean, he walks into the room. He's on the podium. State of the minute Union opening statement, Kissing monologue, <laughs> taking picture. Uh, take, I mean, like here's was, what I got for you boys. So here's his opening statement yesterday, uh, and does give an injury report um, as well, and includes some Greg Brooks news. All right. Good afternoon. Uh, we'll begin with a recap from this past weekend. Um, you know, going on the road, playing an 11 a.m. game requires. Uh, you know, for our team to think the right way, I thought they did a great job of um, thinking right about the trip itself. You know, it's easy to think about how difficult and how early, and instead they thought about it as, you know, a great opportunity uh, to be the first game up, um, to go on the road and uh, play four quarters with a, the competitive edge that um, they've been looking for in terms of playing for four quarters. Um, and, you know, there's always that sense of uh, playing early and, and getting back home. So I, I thought they did a great job of, um, you know, thinking the right way. And then, you know, you have to flip that switch from, you know, preparation to performance. And to do that, you've got to play with a sense of urgency and you've got to have the emotional control, uh, but p play with an edge. And, and um, they got off to a fast start. Um, you know, played with great effort and enthusiasm. There was, there was a, really an attention to the details out there, and um, you know, finished strong. So that's what we're looking for from our football team. Um, that's an identity that we want to create each and every week, um, and certainly one that we believe that we can be. Uh, now it's about building on that and, and uh, looking for that uh, consistency. There were some obviously some great performances um, as highlighted by um, Jaden Daniels and Malik Neighbors being named the SEC Co-Offensive Players of the Week. Um, you know, the, uh, the, the play of the two of them, um, you know, was, was certainly elite. Uh, Daniels, 425 yards of total offense. You know the numbers. Uh, but, you know, I think if you really look at it closely, some of the things that maybe don't get the, the attention was his presence in the pocket and how many times he got hit after delivering, you know, a great throw. Um, sometimes we cut it off and see the ball in the air, but you, you don't see the, the, the play all the way through. And made some great throws under duress. Those, those are NFL throws, some of the ones that he made, um, not backing down, staying in the pocket, knowing that he was going to get hit and still delivering the ball with, with great accuracy. And Neighbors, obviously, his ability to um, handle any coverage variations. Um, and look, some of, again, the things that, that sometimes don't get talked about, um, he maintains space on the field. Um, he carves out an opportunity um, to catch the ball. Uh, many times we see defenders squeeze out offensive players. Uh, Malik is strong and physical as well, and he can, uh, he can hold his line and, and, and give the quarterback an opportunity. So uh, hats off to both of those guys. Um, great work. And... Um, you know, look to do the same. Um, I, I don't know that there's any reason why they can't continue to um, uh, play at that level. Um, you know, obviously, uh, defensively holding Mississippi State to seven total yards on their first uh, three possessions. Um, you know, I thought defensively coming together, um, allowing just uh, under a yard, 100 yards rushing in, in the SEC in terms of anything that you do uh, is a job well done. Third down, we were really efficient. We got off the field. Um, 
and again, harassed the quarterback. You know, got the quarterback down, had sacks, did the things that you need to do in the SEC. You've got to play that kind of defense. So, all in all, um, uh, a great performance on the road, and now something that we need to uh, certainly build on um, moving forward. Um, Get a chance now to play another SEC opponent in Arkansas. Um, I think we all know about this game. It is a hard-fought, physical game. Uh, each and every year, I think the last three years have been decided by a total of something like nine points, I think. It's, uh, it's a rivalry trophy, battle for the boot, annual, annual trophy between the two schools that started back in the, the mid-'90s. So I know our guys understand uh, who they're playing uh, and the tough games that we've had with them, including last year. Um, so they'll be prepared for that. Now it's about preparing the right way again this week and then you know, playing with that competitive edge. So uh, looking forward to that. They've got some really good players. Sam Pettman does a great job. I have a ton of respect for Sam. And he'll have his team ready to play. Bouncing back uh, after last week's loss, uh, he'll have his team uh, ready to go. And we'll have to respond in kind. Um, you know, K.J. Jefferson, the quarterback, uh, three-year starter. I think we all know about his size and strength. Uh, he can run the football. Um, Raheem Sanders, A.J. Green, two outstanding backs, uh, Armstrong, uh, and the defense, although a new defensive coordinator, uh, outstanding coordinator coming from UCF. He's had great success, great pedigree in the SEC, you know, was with Kevin Steele uh, at Auburn. So uh, we know we've got our hands full. So uh, certainly um, looking forward to being in uh, Tiger Stadium uh, this Saturday. Uh, we're going to take advantage of being there because we won't be back for a little bit. So um, we'll talk about that and uh, make sure our guys relish the opportunity of playing at home. We had a couple of guys that did not play. Um, I'll talk about them briefly. Um, first of all, Omar Spates uh, had that what we uh, felt like was a lower body injury. I would list him now as probable. Ovia Gufu, the same thing, lower body injury. I'd list him as probable. Same thing with Mason Taylor. All of those will be probable. Uh, Greg Brooks is out. Um, uh, he, again, I, I don't have a lot that I can report on Greg. It is, um, it is a family uh, matter, um, so I'm not going to speak on, on the family's behalf. If there's anything that I can get to you further uh, after I speak with the family, we'll certainly give you information. But uh, Greg is, is dealing with a, a medical emergency, and um, he will not be available. So with that, we'll open it up to questions. About it in retrospect. Brian Kelly with a opening statement, a very informative opening statement yesterday at his press conference going into this Arkansas game where K.J. Jefferson, Sam Pittman, and the Hogs will be in Baton Rouge. As he said, this will be the last home game for a minute. They'll be two weeks away from home as they'll travel to Oxford next weekend for a game versus Ole Miss, and then Missouri will be uh, hosting LSU on October 7th before LSU gets back home versus Auburn on October 14th. So if you plan on getting out this weekend, uh, this will be the time that you see them for the next two weeks uh, in Baton Rouge. As for the next couple of weeks, they'll be away um, from from Baton Rouge. Obviously, unpacking a lot of what Brian Kelly said in that opening statement, uh, you know, kind of rewinding to the start of it and recognizing his quarterback and wide receivers, Jaden Daniels and Malik Neighbors, on their performance on Saturday versus Mississippi State. And you saw that the league um, recognized what Daniels and Malik were able to accomplish. And really, when you looked around the country yesterday, after people had a chance to digest the college football weekend, you really started to see the flowers being thrown at the quarterback wide receiver down at LSU. Kirk Herbstreet put out his top five performances of the weekend. He had Daniels and Neighbors in that mix uh, for, for their performance after Neighbors caught all 13 of his targets uh, for 239 yards. He also scored twice in that win. Those were Daniels' two touchdown passes after he threw nearly a, a perfect day at quarterback. He was 30 of 34 for 88% completion percentage. 361 yards and a couple of scores. Both of them went to Neighbors. Those guys recognized by the league and 
really from a national standpoint, people starting to pay attention to LSU offensively. We mentioned to you they're number one in the league right now as far as total yards, and uh, they're, they're right behind Ole Miss in scoring um, as, as Ole Miss's offense is putting up over 50 right now where LSU's is averaging 45 points per game. Um, but when you, lead, you, you look around uh, college football, this is a top 12 offense after three weeks of action, and it looks like they're only getting better. We mentioned yesterday that they're still, you know, f- have not found a, a role for, for a guy like Aaron Anderson. you got to imagine Anderson, once he does find his place in this offense and wherever he begins to fit in and, and becomes, you know, somewhat of a focal point or just a part of the action, that that will only improve this group and this unit. More from Kelly yesterday. Here he was speaking about defensively some new faces that you saw out there. Obviously, Whit Weeks had a great week versus Mississippi State, the leading tackler. A lot what we mentioned with Whit Weeks yesterday and just watching him play, his aggression, his speed, and the first play that you saw him where he, you know, he plugged the gap. Mm. That that was something that you know you you you've been looking for out of that position. And Kelly mentioned that play and seeing it real time and what Weeks brings to the lineup. Here he is talking about his defense over the weekend. About it in retrospect? Yeah, we did. I mean, we had a lot of confidence that, um, you know, Braden Swenson would be able to go in there and, and, and play at a high level. We had during the year, you know, um, you know, what Weeks, uh, we knew what we had. We had a young player, certainly a true freshman, but, it, you know, he can run all over the field. He's extremely athletic. Um, you know, I think you, you get a little concerned when you play a lot of true freshmen. Um, you know, certainly in the back end of your defense. Um, Ryan Yates came in and thought, played really well. He was clean. He was disciplined in his alignments. Uh, he was assignment correct. But, you know, you got three true freshmen on the field. Um, on the road in the SEC, I don't think you're running around going, oh, this is great. Uh, but we have confidence in them that they could go out and, and play well. I think what it shows more than anything else, and, and Coach uh, and I were talking about this, um, Coach House, is that we have more than 11, and, and we need to play them more. It's kind of like what we talked about the week before um, with um, Guillory and, and certainly Jefferson at the tackle position. They didn't play enough the week before. where They played much more, and you can see how that helps our rotation at the defensive line. I think you'll see now that we can play a lot more at the linebacker position and the safety position. Uh, yeah, very refreshing to hear, obviously, about the players, the selections, the the options that they have, and the new faces that you saw over the weekend and the improvement that LSU was playing with because of it. Here he is talking about Spates and where he fits in moving forward. Yeah, it's a good question. I think the guy that's really um, settled this for us in terms of you know, whoever he's been with has been Greg Penn. Uh, Greg's been outstanding. He's a settling um, factor out there for us. He gets guys lined up. Uh, he communicates very well. Um, and, and that's a guy that uh, we want to keep on the field. So, you know, we'll be moving guys around to complement that. And, and I think, you know, the best rotation keeps Greg on the field, and then we'll move guys in and out with him. More from the defensive side, Stewie. This is five this is Kelly talking about the return of Mason Smith and just what he's added defensively. You need to get comfortable on where you think he's at. Yeah, I think he's getting there. I mean, we saw some things that he, he wasn't doing against Grambling that now he's starting to impact the game a little bit more. And I think that'll continue to grow as he continues to play himself in, in a position where he can play at a high level each and every snap. So, you know, he's, he's uh, physically a, a presence in there. And uh, we expect him to uh, continue as the season progresses. Um, he's going to be an impact player for us. So feel good about where he's gone uh, over the last couple of weeks and um, expect to see more of him. Um. Here's Kelly talking about another standout from Saturday on the defensive side. Savion Jones, defensive end, junior defensive end, had a really big day. You seen out of him? Just moving better. You know, here's a bigger guy that is starting to, to come into his size. Um, you know, he, he, he put on a lot of weight in the offseason. Good weight, uh, but, but he's now having to play um, 
more football than he's ever played. Um, he's, he's starting to get a sense of how to train and put himself in a position to uh, handle himself with this new role that he has. And I, I think he's only going to continue to get better. We saw that suddenness. We saw that reaction that we weren't getting earlier in the year. The game's starting to get um, easier for him again, and, and I just think he's going to continue to get better. Yeah, Savion Jones also kind of going back a couple of comments to what he was saying about Greg Penn. Penn is a guy that's really kind of – I, I would have expected him to go to Greg Penn like earlier, like Florida State game. Yeah, it was, it was, it was head-scratching on why it took him a minute, but it seems like now he's – I mean, you got to go Greg Penn and – Whoever else on side of them, Whit Weeks or Omar Spates, like they rotate, I guess. Yeah. Coach, I've seen enough from Whit Weeks <laughs> to to play him the whole game. To Same. say that is the linebacker. I don't know what. I mean, look, Spates might be hurt, and he, yeah. I mean, he is obviously hurt, but he could have been hurt in the first game time we saw first him. two games, right? And if that's the the fact, then understandable. But when you look at Whit Weeks and Spates play. After seeing two games of Spates and one game of Weeks, it if Spates is was hurt, okay, because it's a totally different prospect. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's a totally different player. I mean, that is. Um, you could even say the same for Greg Penn. Like if you if you were watching the last, the three games that they played, you watch Greg Penn and Omar Spates. Greg Penn's the one making an impact on the defense, not Omar Spates. So. And it's a perfect two games to kind of get what week's involved, right? When you kind of know what you're getting with Mississippi State and Arkansas, the, the style, like stylistically what they do offensively, mm-hmm. where you're going you're gonna to need them against K.J. Jefferson because you know what? You didn't get that opportunity last year where they had to put in uh, their backup. I don't know his name, but – no, because KJ Jefferson didn't play. Remember? Oh, uh, Malik Hornsby. Yeah. yeah, Malik Hornsby, the track guy. Yeah. Well, you know who else can run? <laughs> Turns out Perk can go too. And so when you have those kind of, when you, you've played a team like this before, stylistically, it feels like it helps to have a Whit Weeks and a Greg Penn where it feels like a little bit more run heavy than pass heavy. So you know what you get from the linebackers, and then that lets Harold go eat because when it was, and when it wasn't Greg Penn, that was the Perk in the middle experiment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, here's more from Brian Kelly. This is 12 of him talking about defending KJ Jefferson. Sure. Well, I think it's like any other quarterback, right? I mean, when you get into the final year and, and where you feel like this is your year, um, you, 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 you want to do well. And, and I think he, you know, he's, he certainly feels like this is his year to showcase himself. So, um, you know, I thought maybe, you know, if you look at the last quarters, he's trying to make plays. Um, but he's got a lot of new players around him as well, you know. So it's not all about him, you know. I mean, he's got some young players that, that have to develop or new players that have to develop around him. But he's still the big, physical, athletic quarterback that uh, scares you. Um, he's hard to bring down. Uh, he's got a live arm. Um, and, and we're going to be prepared for him to play his best against us. Uh, that was Kelly talking about defending K.J. Jefferson, the big quarterback from Arkansas. Man, it, leading into that BYU game, he was playing as good yeah. at that position as anybody. Um, kind of struggled a little bit against BYU. They struggled a little bit. You know, they had 14 penalties yeah. versus BYU, which is – running back was out too. Right. They had some guys out, and they're getting some guys back this week. Um, but Yeah, yes. K.J. ran it 13 times, so they ran it – they had Rashad – Dubinian run it 13 times, K.J. Jefferson ran it 13 times, and they threw it. So 40 total carries on offense and 35 pass attempts. Threw for 250, one touchdown, had a long of 30. So, I mean, it feels like the same Arkansas that you've always seen. You, you know it's going to be physical. And last year it feels like you could almost you could almost throw it out because everybody had the flu and it was a weird, was a weird early game. kick, and it just felt like, a different, felt like a different game. Happy to get out of there with the win, but LSU was – that's the outlier – that game and the A and M game feel like the outliers of the season, right? Yeah. Where you didn't really see LSU ever get off the mat. You have an all time performance from Harold Perkins to kind of will your team to victory. That's when Matt House started to get a lot of run as shit, you gotta hope you keep him. Yeah. As a defensive coordinator. So it feels like you you're going to have a good game plan going into Arkansas because of what Matt House did last year. And KJ Jefferson's KJ Jefferson, you know what you're getting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there is that highlight of him getting 
a free runner come straight at him. Have you seen that? Oh, I think yes. it was week one or two. Free shot. Safety has a free shot on him. KJ just bodies bounces him. Off bounces him. right off of him. Like, up and like, right, what are you cool. doing? But that's that's what you're scared of because if you can extend and make plays, that's when Arkansas's offense is at its best. Harold Perkins, second week in a row, looking pretty good on the edge. Here is Kelly talking about where Perkins fits in moving into late September. So I think with, with Perk, I think just playing with that energy, you know, playing with that edge, um, you know, he's got to learn where that, you know, where that balancing act is, right? We don't want to get him in a position where he's taking a swing at somebody and he's out of the game, but he's got to play with energy. He's got to play with emotion. That's, that's how he plays the game the best, and I thought he brought that. I thought he brought that competitive edge, and that's, that's going to put him in a position to get to the quarterback and set the edge and run people down, and you just got to play. He's just got to play that way, and I think he was tweaking it and trying to find that. Early on, he was playing inside. He was thinking a lot. He was slowing down. I think he's coming back to finding what that balance is. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the, the first penalty on the goal line, that, that was on our center. The center did not snap the ball on the clap. Uh, Will gets called for um, a uh, procedure penalty. Um, the holding, I, look, I, we know all about holding, right? Um, it, 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 it is debatable um, on the call. Um, the only one that I had a conversation with him is the retaliatory action with the helmet. And I said, look, you know, you wear seven and you're a captain. you you got to make better decisions. But that's the first time I've ever talked to him about making a bad decision going into his sophomore year. So I think we're on the plus side when it comes to that with Will Campbell. Brian Kelly speaking about two of his, uh, his underclass superstars and Harold Perkins and Will Campbell. Uh, it is amazing that Campbell – just, I mean, <laughs> where would you be without those two? I mean, I, I think he just had to think about the game, just to, just to kind of like calm come down. Point. Come on, come sit I down. need you next week. Yeah, <laughs> like, well, but come, come see, bro. <laughs> and uh, I mean, Will Campbell. I think that uh, we talked about a little bit uh, on Sunday night. I think it was a mindset thing. Just let's go. I kind of wanted you. Kind of wanted to see it if you're yeah. if you're watching from an LSU perspective, where it was be mean, be dirty, be like, mm-hmm. get your, get your swagger back a little bit. If he drops that helmet, throw it. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. You can take out the game. You can take you out, yeah. but it just, it was a tone setter. And I think it was a tone setter on both ends, but you wanted to see that from Will Campbell, especially the way that they were, they were dominating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kind of feeling myself a little yeah. bit. Right. Feeling good coach. Sorry. All time helmet. To- Did he throw it? I've never seen the video. I, I haven't seen it either. I've just heard that he went Turley. Yeah. That's what I heard too. Now Turley, they had like four different angles right. of it. It was mean, all I mean, time. He stayed in the middle of the field. <laughs> Throw it into the stands. I mean, he like he, he threw it like a discus. He's about to say it was an Olympic throw. <laughs> he shot put that thing out of there. Thanks for tuning in to our premium LSU content right here on YouTube. If you want more of it, subscribe below.